Now, there is a fourth one the book talks about, but please understand this is not maintenance. This is called tenant improvement. Tenant improvement. So let's break that word up. Tenant, guess who's doing it? The tenant. Improvement. What's an improvement? Man made item. In the commercial world, the tenant improvement or TI or the other slang word is called the build out is almost always on the tenant. Once again, Subway has a different build out than Walden bookstores do. So therefore the tenant would come in and do their tenant improvements to fit the design that they want and they call it a build out, all right? In the commercial world, most managers will lease out what they call a white box. That's literally what it is. For those of you not sitting in the school, but you have seen it, it literally was a white box when we moved in. All the walls were painted white. It was one big room, 40 by 25 feet. And when we came in, I said, I wanted a school. I want a big classroom and a little office space. So we put that wall that separates the little office area from the classroom. And that would have been tenant improvement or our build out that we wanted. And we did that ourselves. Now we still had to show the plans to the property manager and tell him what we were gonna do. And he kind of signed off on it and said, okay, is there any electrical in that wall? And if you'll notice in that wall back there, there's no electrical outlets. It's just a subdividing, demising wall. And we said, no. So he said, okay, you guys can go ahead and do that. Now, if it got real hairy, he might say, we want you to sub out the electrical portion. So property managers may still have the final word, but the tenant is the one responsible both physically and financially, all right? And when the tenant moves out under that old theory that we uh, called constructive annexation, the tenant has to remove or put the property back into that white box scenario. So theoretically, when I leave, I have to take those white boards off the wall. I have to remove that demising wall. So when I give it back to the property manager, I give back to him that white box that I got from him. Okay. Now you can always negotiate all of that. Sarah? I was just wondering if, it, if it's more extensive, like my friends own a a therapy and counseling business that they had the it used to be a white box like that and then they I mean it's a it's really subdivided into parts now and offices and carpet and the walls are thicker and all these things do they all I mean in that situation would they just wouldn't the property manager just want to lease it out to like another business that is comparable to that if they leave Yes, and that's exactly what I was trying to get at when I said it's negotiable. The landlord may come to your friend and say, hey, look, when you move out, just leave it that way because I'm going to try and market this property to another therapy that doesn't require that build out. Now, let's just maybe make an assumption that it's built out into 34 by four rooms. Stupid example, but just to prove the point. The manager said, the property manager said, dude, that use is so specific that I really want you to put it back. So that would be that part of that negotiation that I was talking about where the tenant could go, I'm going to end my lease. And the landlord says, we'll leave it with four offices. I'll try and rent it out to an accounting or an attorney or a doctor because we could use the four offices. So yes, they could leave them they could require it to be put back. And that kind of depends on in the lease, in my lease, in my lease, it specifically states 
that the property shall be returned to its original condition unless there is a subsequent written amendment by the landlord and the tenant allowing the tenant improvements to stay. So that's virtually what you're saying. If I leave and Andy says, you know what, I'm gonna try and rent it out to another school, don't worry about putting it back, we'll leave it that way, okay? On page 377, another issue property managers have would be the environmental issue. Now, don't freak out yet. I am not talking about methyl ethyl death or underground storage tanks, which could be a problem. The number one environmental issue for most managers, trash. How do you do, what do you do with the trash? complexes may have a dumpster that dumpster has to be removed by some company so you could establish some trash schedule pickup we took over a property on washington street that was 11 units of the 11 only two of them were rented out because the prior property manager was just terrible well one of the things we when we first took over we started doing some, we did a study, and one of the things we noticed was Rumpke Trash was picking up the dumpster twice a week for two tenants. I mean, this big dumpster might have like three bags of trash in it. So the first thing we did is we went to the owner and we're like, why are you picking up trash so much? He's like, well, we used to do that, and I guess I never really thought about it, so we called Rumpke and we changed the trash pickup from twice a week to once a week. And we virtually cut one of his expenses in half virtually overnight because he wasn't utilizing that requirement. Now, once we got it up to about seven or eight units, we then called Rumpke and said, okay, we want to go back to two times a week because now it's more full. So trash is an environmental issue. Here's another issue. And this one freaked me out, man. We had a house in Shelbyville and she called me and she's like, hey, we've got a problem. I'm like, okay, what is it? She goes, we've got like a thousand funnel spiders in the house. I'm like, burn it down. Cause that's what I do. Um, Insects, infestations are actually issues, all right? So you may have to deal with a term terminators. I know that I personally, I ain't going after that some bitch. Not, not with spiders, I don't do spiders, man. About three weeks ago, no, it was before this class started. Did I tell you that story? I put my hoodie on, my hoodie was in the basement. I came down, it was cold, I threw my hoodie on and I felt my hair brush against my face. So I flipped my hair and a, one of those uh, wolf spiders was in my hair and I literally heard it hit the table. That's how big it was. I flipped out. I'm pulling my hair out and I ripped the hoodie off and I'm yelling at my wife who comes running down. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, Tell me that's not real. And she's like, uh, it's real. I'm like, burn the house now because I'm out. And she had to like smack it and she smacked it and it kind of went ha, and started moving. She said, bah, 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 bah. but it, I, yeah, I can't do it. I can do rats, snakes, cockroaches. Those don't bother me. But that spider was in my hair and it was so huge. It literally went when it hit the table, I heard it. That's how big it was. So for like a week, I'd come down and I'd pick up my hoodie. Just before I put it on, cause I ain't trusting that thing again, man. So watch out for that with environmental issues, pests, trash, plus all of the other environmental stuff that we may get into if you're on the commercial side of that world, all right? Now, we touched on this in a previous chapter, touching on it again here. Remember, as a property manager, you have an office. 
So therefore you've got ADA compliance issues you may have to deal with. Uh, there are two, Title I, the employer must make reasonable accommodations to help their employees that may have a disability, which could include lower desks, wider doors, grab bars in the bathroom, and that would be Title I because you have a management office and may have employees. Title III of the ADA, remember, deals with the consumer access to public goods and services. So not only do your employers or your employees may have issues, you've got tenants coming into your office, paying rent, making maintenance requests. So you have to make sure that your tenants can get into your office as well. Elevators, if you're not on the main floor, curb cuts for the wheelchairs to roll up on the curb, TTY phones, seeing uh, helping animals. All of these things would play a role in your office as a property manager. And because your business deals with housing, you still have the fair housing as well. So you've got fair housing issues, you've got ADA issues, and then the third one you've got is the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. You've also got credit issues because by definition, when you rent to a tenant, you are extending credit to them for that total lease amount. It might be 38,400 paid $3,200 a month. That was the example earlier. So you are in fact extending credit to them as a property manager. If so, you now have the eight protected classes for credit. And if you remember, fair housing, race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial status, disability. With credit, you have race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, age, and dependence on public assistance. There's eight protected classes. So as a property manager, you've got ADA issues, you've got fair housing issues, and you've got equal credit opportunity issues. And they may be the word issues, not the best word there, because you should not have any issues at all with them. Now, one of the biggest factors you will deal with with your tenants is safety, risk management, risk management, all right? There are four ways to handle the risk management. 